Hindleg is evaluated to uh, specify this number. Maybe it's Toastmasters. This is Toastmasters in one level one project here. The purpose of this project is to introduce yourself to the club and learn the basic principles of this. Greetings and viewers. How many have you heard about the Hannity before? I'm pretty much everyone, almost of you have seen the movie. So today I'm not going to speak about the movie, but about the dish itself. You know, if you look deep into the ingredients, they're quite random on its own. But only when they're together, it's complete. And I believe my life is just like that. A bit of very random flavors in terms of experience that I'm going to give you a little bit of taste of in the next few minutes. I do Master Sithan Singh would now uh, put forward you the journey of my life. So I was born in 2005 in Delhi and I shifted many cities by the age of 3 because my father was a, was a dog in armed forces and then he became a surgeon. From first to fourth I had a very plain, sober and boring life. I was in Delhi school and even though my mom uh, enrolled me to various classes of Abacus, Casio, dancing, painting, at the same time I'm not going to talk about that because I'm pretty much trash and all of that. And then, for, because of my father's work, I shifted to film. Now at that time, guys, that is my real main character development arc. Now when I shifted to Faridabad, it is a new place, new environment, new people, new attitude. And I was a very shy and devoted kid. To that point that whenever my classes asked me of any competition that she mentioned, any upcoming event, I used to hide into the desk so she doesn't take me. Then one day, she did ask and just picked me for a debate competition. Now the most I've been on the stage was for a fashion show that my mother put me up as a newspaper man in second grade. <laughs> now I have to go for a debate competition. I went to my father. I asked him for help. He was pretty happy. He made me a speech and he said remember the topic. It was as uh, if Hindi should make me the official language. I went. I gave it in my own section. I got selected for the finals. And I again gave it the same speech in the finals. And then I went before the results because I was like, wasn't expecting anything. Then my teacher called me up. Siddhant Yerbal, like, I'm again, Siddhant Yerbal, like, okay. Now, that moment of joy, that absolute peace of tranquility in my heart is still unmatched, even though if I reach the peak of Mount Everest, because that was the first thing out I heard. That entitlement was something else, and from that was the journey of my whole political career, and all about speaking. From that point, my confidence went up and up. The person who was so shy and introverted in fifth standard is now the new chit, chit chat box of the sixth standard and just grasped every opportunity like it in MPM's debates and I was a new height in the school because I did my first evening in class 8 and I remember it was a really big thing to get the best record award and I got the best record award in my very first evening. So I was the new height. I used to talk about everything in the school and I was doing good. Now that's all about my oratory thing. Now just like parallel storyline of the main character. I was also very fascinated by the terms of Kung Fu, Fu Shu, Karate. And I always used to ask my mother, please get me to classes, please get me to karate classes, please get me to karate classes. But she always used to deny. Well, her reason was pretty valid. She was like, you hurt yourself even when there's no nobody. So, why do you wish to go to contact school? A fun fact, I have four stitches on my body. Two on my forehead, one on my chin, and one on my hand. The anchor one, I don't remember. In the chin one, I was jumping from sofa to my bed to sofa, and I burst my chin on the swing machine. Then I, the third one I was playing with my cousin, he was on the other side of the door, the door was locked. Dad opened the door and I was just sitting there, of course my forehead. Then the fourth one I got by diving into swimming. Oh, wait, diving into an empty swimming. <laughs> <laughs> so funny, isn't it? It wasn't so funny when the erudition became wet because of the blood coming out of the head. Now, again, my mother's reason was valid, but uh, in science standard I got enrolled into a class. It was really fun. I love the training part, the body part. I, my son even made me used to do cardio drills for little children. And I love chasing little children. Okay. <laughs> 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 that, that wasn't supposed to come as a dot media joke, but okay. Anyways, the main part was that I really enjoyed the training part. But then came the nightmare of a karate district. I was very excited. It wasn't, it wasn't the nightmare before I participated. I was really excited. But I was an average painter in high grade and then realized that my category would have 20 to 30 people in the district level itself. I went to the tournament. It was all chaos. There were six, seven rings. I still remember it, and all the idea was 
Talk number one, start talk number two, and it was all chaotic. I just waited, waited, waited. And after so much time, I turn finally come and I planned. I couldn't move a muscle, and the fight ended in a technical way. That means seven zero. I cried. I called my father. I said I have to go home. My father was also reluctant, so he said there's no need to go to the class. Then go. Then they said I went to the classes. And but the thing was, now I have a trauma. Now I have extreme anxiety of tournaments. I really get the enjoying parts, the part where I play with kids, but not the tournament part because it was so much pressure on me. But my karate teacher forced me to play karate. I was really nervous. My mother consoled me. I went there and I irritated all my teammates. I was like, "What if my opponent does this? What if my opponent does this? What if he uses this? What if he uses that?" Use that? My sir just went, uh, sent me away for five minutes because of that because he, I wasn't able to like referee properly. Then my job finally came, and I was told. I felt very accomplished, but the thing was there was a problem. The first fight trauma is was still there, and I couldn't overcome. Even though I was physically getting better, I started winning, losing, winning, losing. But there was still that anxiety because in a tournament, before it's your fight, it's very hectic. You're always anxiety. After the fight, it's free. I really like the after part, but before, I did not. I called my mother and told her every time. I cried, I cried. Then I fell. Then I also cried. But it was very nervous for me, and I didn't go through that phase. Then one day, my teacher told me something that is still applied in every part of my life. Look, Sivan, there's two minutes in that time. It doesn't matter for how long you've trained before. It doesn't matter how much time you've wasted time before. In that two minutes, it's totally in your hand. If you do something, you'll win. You're the only person that can create it, and you're the only person that can destroy it. And I believe that if you put this fundamental in every concept of your life, you can win. Because let it be any any fitting thing in your life. If you put it right, there's a golden period in which if you take action, if you take this plank, your fate is in your hands. And from that, I used to manage my academies and sports pretty well until then. And then COVID came. Now in all that chaos, there was another parallel thing going on with me. A prerequisite. I am a person in all those horror movies. I am a very scary guy. Then something paranormal happened. Something not paranormal, very paranormal, is still happening with me. I started sleepwalking. All right, and you won't believe me, but the first six months I didn't believe my parents because I thought that it was a very, very, very extended prank. But it was not. I went to my friends' sleepover, and his mom.